of the swimming, five dead bodies will be, will be, will be, will be, will be blown ashore, will be washed ashore the following day. And the following year, more. Instead of the thing becoming a deterrent, more. That shows that what Paul wrote to Timothy is happening. Men in the last days, men shall depart from the faith. They shall be godless. They shall give heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. It's not going to happen in our country. Not on our watch. That is why God has given us the drive to raise more evangelists. We are betting our kinds. People who will become more powerful than us. Say amen. amen. Are you there? Yeah. So the Bible said in the book of Isaiah chapter 6 verse 8. Isaiah chapter 6 verse 8. The Bible said. Also I heard the voice of the Lord saying. Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? Then said I. Here am I send me. I want it to be your clarity, your answer today. Lord, here am I, send me. Please say it after me. Lord, here am I, send me. Say it again. Lord, here am I, send me. Say it for the last time. Lord, here am I, send me. It is this sending that is what has brought the gospel. To our continent. Say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The Bible said. In John. Chapter 3 verse 16 and 17. It says. Look at it. For God. So loved the world. That he gave. His only begotten son. That whosoever believed in him. Should not perish but have everlasting life. 17. For God sent not his own son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. So sending saves the people. See, man. The people are saved because somebody was sent. Say, I hear you, my pastor. So look at what Paul wrote to the church, to the church at Rome. Romans 10, 11 to 18. For the scripture said, Whosoever believeth on him shall be, shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. Say amen. Go. For whosoever shall what? Call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Go. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? Say amen. And how shall they preach except they be sent? How shall they preach except they be sent? I am here to send somebody. Amen. Say amen. amen. And how sh shall they preach except they be said it is written how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things I will never stop preaching this message I will never stop it even if you have heard it with me preach hear it again 
and hear it again. Because it is the sending. That is why we are here. Do you think it was easy for Jesus Christ to just come here? Foxes have holes and the birds of the air have, have nests. But the son of man has nowhere to lay his head. And he was roaming around. Having left his glory to come down on earth. To come and mingle with man. And eat, and eat food like man. And sleep like man. From eternity into time. He lived in eternity. He has to step into time. So that he can sleep, he can poo poo, he can wee wee, he can wear clothes, he can be tired. And Jesus was tired and he fell asleep. When he was in eternity, there's nothing like tiredness. He lived in glory. But because he was sent, he has to step from eternity into time. Am I talking to somebody here? So based on Based on that sending, he came preaching, teaching. Look at Matthew 9.35. Matthew 9.35. And Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease amongst the people. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion on them because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. Next verse. Then said he unto his disciples, the harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore, the Lord of the harvest, that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. He will send forth laborers into his harvest. Truly, then, 2,000 years ago, 2,000 years ago, their world, they said, the harvest truly was plenteous, but the laborers are few. Now, the harvest is more plenteous and the laborers are more fewer. The harvest is more. In this country, they say 77% of the population of this country is Christian. If you put all our churches together in number, because we are close to about 30 million people in this country, including Nigerians who are living here. Because we are about 26. Nigerians are about 4. <laughs> 4 million. <laughs> we are about 30 million. Or 30 something million. See, man? If you go and count all our members in the churches, we can't reach a certain million. We can't reach. It means many more profess to be Christians, but they are not truly born again, tongue-talking, spirit-filled Christians. Say amen. amen. And so, we have a lot of work to do. Christ cannot come now. If he comes, you won't have many people to take to heaven. Say, I hear you. The Bible said in John 17, 18 and 19, in John 17, 18 and 19, he says, As thou hast sent me into the world, even, even so have I also sent them into the world. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. For their sakes I sanctify myself, that they also might be sanctified through the truth. Look at the next verse. Look at the next chapter. Uh, John 20 and 21. John 20, 21. Look at it. Look at it. Then said Jesus to them again, Peace be unto you. As my Father, as my Father have sent me 
Even so send I you. As my father have sent me, even so send I you. So Jesus also, after he finished his work, sent the disciples. And the Bible said, and they went everywhere. Preaching, teaching. And by the space of two years, all who dwell in their world, Asia Minor, everyone had truly heard the gospel. See, man? Because they were sent. Don't forget, though, sending is the reason why you are sitting here. Sending. And since this commission, the Basel missionaries, the Germans, the British, sold their goods, sold their wares, sold everything. Say amen. amen. And then they rolled their ships, cargo ships, those days, the ships were not like the ships we have today. I don't know whether you've seen the kind of ships we have today. The ships that we have today is like a floating city. They have been in the latest modern ship. If you see it, when you go home, go and Google. Uh, um, I'll give you the name of the cruise. Can- Carnival Cruise. Yeah, Carnival Cruise. Google it. You, you, it's 21 stories. It's one, I can't mind imagine it, 6,000 passengers. About 1,700 feet long. Some crazy numbers be. <laughs> crazy numbers. But those days, the ships were not like that. And they sailed. There were no flights. They sailed and came and docked in Africa. By the time they came, we were half naked. We were, we, our dresses were half naked. We ate lizards. We drank from the, from the wells and pools and rivers. Say man. We worship trees. We worship things, stones and things. We didn't know God. They came with the gospel. They preached here. They lived here. And they died here. When you go to Mampong, when you go to Ebri, all those areas, you see some of the missionaries, their tombs, they came here. They didn't return. Because they read the Great Commission, as the Father have sent me, so send I you. Based on that, they came to discover us. They came to what? Discover us. Discover Ivory Coast, discover Nigeria and everything and came and lived here. They learned our languages. They developed alphabets, vowels and consonants with our languages. They spoke our language. Then they wrote the Bible in our languages and taught us how to read our own Bible in our own tongue. Oh, are you hearing what I'm saying? That is the kind of sacrifice the early missionaries made to come to Africa with their children and came here and lived here and evangelized and died and built churches and built schools. There is a museum at Anakazo and I one day would like to carry a lot of you to that museum. You will be blown away because the museum is showing the early church, early missionaries who came to Africa, who, who came to other parts of the world, who brought salvation to many. All these shoot things, all these shoot we are wearing, it's not, our, it's not part of our culture to wear suits. We used to wear, we used to drive half naked. We used to ca- ca- carry whatever, whatever, and then clothe ourselves with banana leaves, and then jump and be chasing antelope. We couldn't speak English. Couldn't do anything. We have never seen a mirror before. We didn't know what a mirror is. 
mirror. <laughs> they brought mirror to us and everything, preach the gospel, establish schools, ministered. That is how come Christianity penetrated Ghana and West Africa. Because some people were sent. Now they are not sending people like that anymore. They have stopped sending. Now the send they know is to come and mine our gold, our bauxites, our companies, make money. So if we don't get up, to evangelize our people, our own people will perish without the gospel. White people are no more crazy about evangelizing because now they need a revival. Oh, am I talking to somebody here? That is why evangelism conference is established. That is why evangelistic schools have been born out so that we can prepare a people and send them. I see you being sent. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Acts chapter 8 verse 4. The Bible said, As it fall, Therefore they that were scattered abroad went everywhere preaching the word. Say amen. amen. Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them. And the people with one accord gave heed unto those things which Philip spake, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. Say amen. For unclean spirits, crying out with loud voice, came out of many that were possessed with them, and many taken with pulses that were lame were healed. And there was great joy in that city. And there was what? Great joy in that city. And there was what? Great joy in that city. And there was what? Great joy in that city. Because Philip went down to Samaria. Anywhere you go, when you finish preaching, God will confirm your word with signs falling and there shall be great joy wherever you go but there will be no great joy the people will not be healed the people will not be delivered when you don't go it only happens when you move when you move and moving is not easy Any church, any ministry, any minister who doesn't take joy in moving has backsliding. Any church, any pastor, any ministry that is not passionate with going, with moving, with preaching has lost the sense of salvation. It means salvation doesn't mean a lot to you anymore. Say amen. amen. Say amen. amen. <laughs> I said, internet, the owner, the one who introduced internet, celebrated 30 years anniversary. Internet came about 30 years ago. The guy who introduced internet, they interviewed him. How do you feel that internet is now dominating the world. You know what is right us? I don't know whether it was a good thing or a bad thing. Because more evil have been, con have been, have been committed under the internet. That good. A lot of our young people have been won over through the internet. The average young person, when he's holding the phone, he is not on gospel. 90% of young people, when you see him with his coconut head buried in the, in, in the internet, it is not gospel. Strange sights. Bad things. Either the person is learning something good or the person is on some foolish something. Say amen. 
the internet, as good as it has come to help our world, has brought more evil. So the guy was not excited. He said he doesn't know whether he brought more evil to the world or he brought good to the world. Say, I hear you, Pastor. So people, we have to evangelize the young, the old, the backsliding, the people who have lost the joy of going to church. Say amen. We have to evangelize everywhere. And that is why today and tomorrow, and especially tomorrow, you will receive an impartation. Something will happen to you tomorrow morning. Tomorrow, to, the whole of tomorrow is dedicated for impartation, both morning, afternoon, and evening. So that when you go, brother, be crazy for Christ. Go everywhere, every hamlet, knock every door, stand behind, stand behind the lorry station, lorry stations, everywhere. The other day, I saw Bishop N. A. Takia Boy on the internet at the trot trot station, at the trot trot station. Which daughter was the Kashima Trotro station with megaphone, with microphone in a t shirt, preaching in the open streets? When you see a frog hopping in the daytime, it is there is something running after his life. Bishop N. A. Takia boy, one of the most renowned men of God, one of one of the fathers and gatekeepers of this land, was on the street of where? Kashima. With a microphone, with speakers on the streets, preaching. A small boy like you, you are shy to preach. A young lady like you, you have importance yourself. I'm shy. Tomorrow I'm anointed to beat away that shyness out of your face. the gospel heal the sick cast out devils preach the kingdom lay hands on the sick declare that the kingdom of God has come on the streets at the marketplace with megaphone anywhere everywhere let's hunt our nation with the gospel of Jesus until they see ghosts everywhere Let's hunt them with the gospel until they have no choice. We, we are contending for their faith. Yes. Say amen. amen. Are you here? Yes. Philip went down to Samaria. The Samaritans heard the gospel because Philip went there and there was great joy in the city. Say amen. In Jonah chapter 1 verse 1, the Bible says something. Give me some small volume of microphone or give me monitor because I can't hear myself well. Jonah 1 1. Now the word of the Lord came unto Jonah the son of Amittai saying, Arise, say arise. arise. Go to deliver that great city and cry against it. For their wickedness is come up before me. But Jonah rose up to flee unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord and went down to Joppa and found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid the fare thereof and went down into it to go with them unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. But the Lord sent out a great wind unto the sea and there was a mighty tempest in the sea so that the ship was like to be broken. Then the mariners were afraid and cried every man unto his God and cast forth the words that were in the ship into the sea to lighten it to, of them. But Jonah was gone down into the sides of the ship and he lay and was fast asleep. So the ship masters came to him and said unto him, What meanest thou, O sleeper? Arise, call upon thy God, if so be that God will think upon us that we perish not. And they said everyone to his fellow, Come, let us cast lots that we may know whose cause this evil is upon us. So they cast lots and the Lord fell on Jonah. 
Then said they unto him, Tell us, we pray thee, for whose cause this evil is upon us? What is thy occupation? Whence comest thou? What is thy country? What people are thou? And he said unto them, I am an Hebrew, and I fear the Lord, the God of heaven, which had made the sea and the dry land. Then were the men exceedingly afraid and said unto him, Why hast thou done this? For the men knew that he fled from the presence of the Lord because he has told them. Then said they unto him, What shall we do unto thee that the sea may be calm unto us? For the sea will rout and was tempestuous. And he said unto them, Take me out and cast me forth into the sea, so shall the sea be calm unto you. For I know that for my sake this great tempest is upon you. Nevertheless, the men rode hard to bring it to the land, but they could not, for the sea wrought and was tempestuous against them. Wherefore, they cried unto the Lord and said, We beseech thee, O Lord, we beseech thee, let us not perish in this man's life and lay not upon us innocent blood, for thou, O Lord, hast done as it pleased thee. So they took up Jonah and cast him forth into the sea, and the sea ceased from her raging. So for an evangelist who refused to be sent, God was ready to trouble the waters. Shake the boat. It means that you have an important vessel in the hands of God for the ministry of evangelism in your community, in your town. In your city, in the village, those of you listening to me on the internet, those of you watching me live, communities, places, we owe them the gospel of Christ. We have heard the gospel and they must hear the gospel. We cannot hear the gospel and go and sleep. We must be fanatics for the gospel. Say amen. Look, some of the extreme people, they are so radical that they have sold their lives for the cause of their faith. Say amen. It's about time God raised radical men and radical women who will take the gospel by storm to places where Satan has dominated. Say, hey, it's very important. Because if we leave a vacuum, if we leave our world, another religion will take over. If you like go to our villages, they are not empty. Churches, organizations, all kinds of strange religions. Since we say we don't want to go there, they have gone there. Yeah. They have converted our old ladies and our old men. Yeah. The young, they wear red berets, they do jijinji. Yes. Our people are converted. Say amen. amen. And those who have the light are sitting in the light. Yes, those who have the light are sitting in the light with their light. Instead of carrying, carrying the light to where there is darkness. Because what darkness fears is light. So you have what darkness fears. And darkness has carried more darkness. And, and light is sitting in light. I charge you therefore that after this conference, carry your light to where there is darkness. Because as soon as light appears in darkness, darkness will flee. Say, I hear you, Pastor. Carry it! Do it! It is expensive. It's challenging. It's very, very, very involving. You will spend money. Your account will go down. That is the purpose of the church. The church is not an entertainment center. It's not 
a fashion parade center. A church is not a comedian place. A place of comedy. It's not where we play Kakeku concert party. It's to mobilize resources. It's to what? Mobilize resources. To evangelize. As the father have sent me. So send I you. To the schools. To training colleges. To universities. To towns. To cities. Where there are souls. Who are perishing. If they die. To go to hell. A lot of pastors and Christians don't know what hell is. A lot of pastors and Christians don't preach about hell anymore. We have lost the sense of hell. There are pastors who believe that a good God will not take people to hell. My beloved, I have good news for you. Hell is real. Heaven is also real. And there are people who are going to hell if they don't hear the gospel and give their life to Christ. There is a movie called Vanished. I don't know whether you have watched it before. Go and watch it. It's called Vanished. In that movie, they showed the rapture and what would take place. It's the most, it's the most vivid movie on the rapture. And they showed the church, people seated like this. And in the course of the movie, then you hear a noise. Shh. Then suddenly, a cross section of the members vanished. And then spots of the people were left, including the pastor. Are you listening to me? Are you listening to me? Shh. The people just flew out of the auditorium. Then, it was a normal day. The day the rapture would take place, it would be a normal day. Normal. Are you sleepy? Are you listening, are you listening to me? Yeah. Then they showed an aircraft. One third of the passengers finished, including the pilot, including the co-pilot. The co-pilot. They showed malls, shopping malls, marketplaces, farming areas. People were vanishing all over the place. The day you hear, shh. If you hear it, if you hear it, it means you have been left. Because you are supposed to, you are supposed to create that noise by going. But you rather heard it. Hey. <laughs> you must not hear it but brother it's going to take place the news will be read that billions have vanished it will be on CNN it will be on everything and when you are listening to this news it means the rapture has taken place and you have been left behind and beloved when that day comes there will be no preaching. The blood to save will not be there. You now have to face the Antichrist and take on the mark of the beast. You can neither buy nor sell until you have that mark. And me, I won't be surprised if the Antichrist has been born and is growing somewhere in Europe or in some of these weird countries or in Africa take over our world. Today they are putting chips, computer chips into our skin. We are practicing what will happen. Today, you can, you, you can put it here. You, you scan your, your, your wrist and the number appears. The number has all your dose here. It's being practiced even now. They are placing computers. We are more in the last days than ever. Every prophecy in the book of Daniel, Nahum, and book of Matthew, Gospel of Matthew, and all the prophecies that were prophesied by, by uh, 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 how do you call it, the major prophets and minor prophets, we have seen it all in our times. 
hunger, famine, pestilence, ungodliness, knowledge shall increase. Men shall be lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God and everything including this gospel, shall be preached in all the world as a witness. The gospel has been translated into languages. And there is no a human being walking on, in the, on the surface of Accra or Ghana who can say that he hasn't heard the name Jesus Christ. He has heard it in a certain way. Hey, Rani! <laughs> when is he going to have an accident? Hey, Jesus! All unbelievers are calling on Jesus when they have a problem. But they haven't, <laughs> they haven't committed their life to Christ. Raise your hands and say, Pastor, I hear you. And the Bible says, and God prepared a big fish, a whale, and he swallowed Jonah. And he spent three days and three nights. Don't be like Jonah. Because as you are here, God is talking to you. There is a place you must go. There are some people you must visit. There are cities you must go to. There are villages you must go. There are some countries. As I'm talking to you, my friend, Bishop Dakir is is in Namibia. He sent me a message this morning. I'm in Namibia. Northern part of Namibia to preach the gospel. He's risking his life. He's risking the life of his people. He's risking everything. And he's spending money. He's spending money to go to Namibia. Brother, no amount of money is too small or too big to spend to win souls. Yeah. Say amen. Yeah. That is why we must prosper as a church. That is why we must what? Prosper as a church. The Bible says in the book of Jonah chapter 3, look at it again. And the word of the Lord came unto him, unto Jonah the second time, saying, Arise, go unto Nineveh, that great city, and preach unto it the preaching that I bid thee. Do it! The preaching that I bid thee. So Jonah arose and went unto Nineveh, according to the word of the Lord, now, Nineveh was an exceeding great city of three days' journey. And Jonah began to enter into the city a day's journey. And he cried and said, Yet forty days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. So the people of Nineveh believed God. When did they believe God? When they heard the preaching. They believed God because they heard the preaching. Until you preach, the people can believe. Say amen. amen. And proclaim a fast and put on sackcloth from the greatest of them even unto the least of them. For word came unto the king of Nineveh and he arose from his throne and he laid his robe from him and covered him with sackcloth and satin ashes. And he caused it to be proclaimed and published through Nineveh by the decree of the king and his nobles, saying, Let neither man nor beast, head nor flock, taste anything. Let them not feed nor drink water. Let man and beast be covered with sackcloth and cry mightily, unto God. Yea, let them turn everyone from his evil way and from the violence that is in their hands. Who can tell? Everybody say, who can tell? Who can tell if God will turn and repent and turn away from his fierce anger that we perish not? One preaching brought a national fast. One preaching. Today, we don't do national fast. We don't do, I don't know what we do. I don't know what preaching we preach. We don't preach. All our preaching are all non silar preachings. What are we preaching? 17 ways to be blessed. 
Five ways to discover your potential. Five ways to discover who you are. It means that all this time you don't know who you are. Amen. To know who you are, you have to know your name. To know your name, you have to know the background to your name. To know your background to your name, there is a Greek word called pushka. And pushka means to discover. It's pushka is two words, push and then ska. That's what we are teaching. We have left the preaching of the gospel of repentance so our hearers can repent. There's nothing wrong with, there's nothing wrong with preaching about discovering your potential, discover who you are. There's nothing wrong with it. But if that is all we are preaching, then there's a problem. We have to fire our people to evangelize. We have to send our people to the field. We have to win the lost at all costs. We have to add evangelism to our church ministry. Say amen. We have to add it. Branches, churches, Wherever you are, on the street, everywhere. No, we, are, we planted a church at East Legon recently. Then I saw one of my members here. I said, well, I don't see you here. Then he said, oh, I'm, with, I'm at the East Legon branch. I said, oh, how is he doing? He said, daddy, it's not easy for us. The people are not coming to church, so we are on the street. The people are not coming to church because we are on the street. We are witnessing to them, compelling them to come to church. He said, Daddy, when I was here, I was just in the choir singing, singing, but where I am, we are on the street. Brother, be on the street. Be on the street. Because sinners don't go to church. I said, well, sinners don't go to church. So we have to be on the street to compel them to come in. I said, Daddy, when I was, he said, Daddy, when I was, I was in the choir singing. But when I went there, I wanted to go and join the choir there. So I joined the choir. But they've sucked us to go on the street. <laughs> so I said, are you able to evangelize? He said, yes, because I came to evangelism school. I passed out the first batch. So I'm on the street. My brother, be on the street. Be on the street. Go to homes. All those of you have churches. And, your, and for the past six years, your members are 35. 30, 35. Oh, how is the church doing? We are normally, normally on the good day, we are about 40. But normally, between 30 and 35. So how long has been your church? Oh, we are entering into our ninth year. Mm, ninth year. This is the this is the birth month. We are laboring. We are normally look. If you are nine years going to ten years and your numbers are thirty five, you are not on the street. You are not on the street. And you are you and you are jumping in front of the thirty five people. Shame on you. You are jumping in front of them. Hey, God is moving. I feel the presence of God. Uh, 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 I see power here. Uh, but, my friend, stop jumping and go on the streets. And compel souls into the church. After nine years, you have 35 members. You are still jumping. Shame on you. In front of 35 people. After nine years, you are still throwing your legs. And feeling powerful. Shall we, um, people, shall we welcome our general overseer? What are you overseeing? <laughs> Stop using that word over 35 members. It's a nonsensical word you use. Shall we welcome our general overseer? What are you overseeing? 
35 people in nine years. You are not well. You are not well. You are delusional. People are preaching to 40,000 members per Sunday in three services, yet they call them Joel Austin. They don't even say General Overseer. You 35 members, you General Overseer. Drop that name now before I do something to you. Drop that name. Shall we hey, invite our general overseer, our episcopus, our papa? What papa are you? Over 35 members. After nine years. You are a papa. You are chicken. Go to the streets. Compare the people. Preach the gospel. Whenever the gospel is preached, people believe. So Sawon. So sack your members from the auditorium and go to the streets and go and win souls. The member will left and say, Daddy, we were about 10. And we've been 10. Uh, so our pastor said, No, people are not joining us. <laughs> so we should all go out. He said, the whole of Saturday, we are roaming around looking for souls. And then he said something. He said, daddy, some of them have no transport. We provide transport for them to come and give them food to eat after the service. Evangelism. Yeah. That, beloved, have you ever seen a wee smoker? Listen, no. A wee smoker, a drug peddler, uh, a womanizer who is, who is doing bad things with small girls you know, on Sunday morning, dressing, say he's going to church before. No. He's not going. He doesn't even see your signboard. That you have seen, general overseer. What are you overseeing? Remove that title immediately before I do something to you. Sinners. Don't go to church. Prostitutes don't go to church. All these guys who are bad, doing smoking things and mashing things, and they don't go to church. One of my friends called Kofi Saki is an evangelist. He comes here. He said, oh, Reverend Steve, this year evangelism conference, I can't come. And step as a I greet him, but I can't come. Because there are a lot of young people in my constituency. They are just smoking weed and drinking. We are going there. I've mobilized my youth. We are invading that youth arena area. They are footballers. They are weed smokers, peddlers. They are into drugs. We are moving there to win them for Christ. I say, brother, God bless your efforts. It's the main thing. Say amen. amen. 20 members, 30 members, we are 5 years, we are 10 years. Some people will say things like, oh, we don't have support. If we went to get support, we'll do a lot of things. Who has support? <laughs> so an excuse. Your five members that are in the church, you know, radicalize them. And you, them. do you know how many times myself, and, you know, you know that Pastor Stanley was my interpreter many years ago? When we started, we were on the street. At dawn, when people are waking up, then we will sing, uh, uh, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. You ask me why the Bible says so. It is written in John's Gospel, in verse 3, chapter 14. 
without the way you can go to God without the truth. How can you know the Lord without the life? There is no living. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Without the life, without the, you can go to God without the truth. How can you know the Lord without the life? There is no living. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. After they finish singing, then I take the microphone. My people, this morning I bring you greetings from the Lord. And beloved, I was a slim young man with my nice tie. Ask, ask this guy. Is it not true? I say, people, Jesus is, on, is coming your way this morning. Jesus is talking, oh, and I will preach heaven and hell. And on that bed, you will make that decision. In your bed. I say, if you hear what I'm saying, Put on the light in your room. You see. Bah, bah, bah. If you are hearing what I'm saying, stand on your bed. Stand up from the bed. Raise your hands. Say this prayer after me. Then I lead them to the sinner's prayer. On the street. At dawn. In their bedrooms. Accepting Christ. Before we go to church. In the morning. This is where we worship. At Opera House. Orion Cinema. Church service starts at 10 a.m. We are inviting you to come. And worship with us. If you hear us. Before we realize people are walking. If you want us to pray for you. If you are sick. You want us to pray for you. Come down. Open your door. Open your gate and come here. You see them. We are waiting for you. Say amen. amen. Then we sing. Marvel not that I say unto you. You must be born again. Marvel not that I say unto you. You must be born again. You must be born. You must be born. You must be born. You must be born, must be born again. Hmm. Marvel not that I say unto you, you must be born again. Marvel not that I say unto you, you must be born again. You must be born. You must be born. You must be born. You must be born, must be born again. You see the people coming out. They will lay hands on them. Say amen. amen. Now, we have Christians who want to hear a message on prosperity. I see you with a car, visa, a brochure. Germany, here I come. And pastors are shaking their legs. Power, cars. We have lost the preaching of the gospel. Go on the street. Compare people to come and add to your 25 members for the past five years. It's an embarrassment. When you are coming to church, remember to invite somebody. They don't come. So go there. <laughs> go there. Go to their home. Be like a ghost. Hunt them. Compel them. Preach. Say amen. amen. Preach it. Those of you in Ho, Ho, Hoi, whatever, Lolonia, whatever, there are souls there. Leave a cry alone. There are souls there. Bring them to church. That my house may be full. When your members are 25, when your members are 25 for eight years, it's worrying. It is what? Worried. You must be a worried pastor. For eight years, your members are 25. 
it must worry you. It must trouble you. My youth here, I think once in a month or something, they wear t-shirt. Is it, is it once in a month? Is it once in a month? The last Sunday, they don't come to church. They wear t-shirt, including their, 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 their pastor, their overseer. Then they are on the street. They go places, t-shirt. Instead of jumping, jumping, jumping on the street. Be on the because that is where the sinners are. In the hamlets, in the ghettos, the brothels, the Tokromuho, they are doing bad things. They go there with the gospel of Jesus. And then compel them to come to church so that your number will increase from 25 to 50. And then Mamba, sorry. And then Mamba, sorry, cry. Mamba, sorry. The sinners who must come to church don't come to church. Sinners don't come to church. Sinners think that our churches are too holy for them to come. They don't know how to sing. They don't know what to do. I mean, they don't have dresses. They don't, they don't have anything. Their garments are off. When they see us, we are too sophisticated, too dressed. They don't come to, they don't come to church. So we, the gospel must go to them. Do you know what it meant for Jesus to live his glory? He came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross. My death to pay from the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Lord, I lift your name on high. Say amen. Beloved, this conference is telling you that there is grace in the gospel to save. When you preach it, when you go out there, when you tell it, the grace will follow you. Mobilize your members. Wear t shirt Where is your place? Poku, is it Pokwasi? Pokwasi. Pokwasi was Amasama. Yeah. Wear t shirt Put at the back of the chitter. Jesus loves you. Go out on the street. Knock on people's door. They will shut the door at your face. It doesn't matter. Go. It's part of the gospel. Some will welcome you in. They are going to market. They are going to places on the street. These are. We have a church here. Go to the marketplace. Go to the seller. Sit with the seller. As she's selling, preach the gospel. So that my house may be full. Amen. But don't think that the sinner is going to get up in the morning and bath and says, I'm coming to church. Sinners don't go to church. Say amen. Say amen. amen. Yesterday, our church at Oyarifa, they brought, I think, how many members did you bring? Six members or ten members. Ten members. When I look at them, I can see that these people, they are far from Christianity. <laughs> you can see that. They went, and, they, they went and pulled them from the world and brought them to church. Because you can see that their robe didn't fit. They look different. <laughs> you, can see, you can see that these are sinners who have been converted. They, look, they, don't, look like, they, 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 they don't look normal. They, they are standing like this. That we are <laughs> You can see that they are, work, they are work in progress. They are working on them. They, they went and converted them. <laughs> I went to preach at our church at uh, the one going to a brewery. What's the name? Eh? Going on the brewery road. Eh? The, the, help, the help assembly. When, they preach, <laughs> when I went to preach, the pastor said, Daddy, all these members, they are all drug peddlers. Drop pushes, so they are, they are working progress. Yeah, yeah, but Trevor. Wow, Tobo. It's true. When I finished preaching, we said they lay hands on them. It wasn't a small thing. I was even afraid for my life because the violence that came upon them. You can see that these are raw people. They went and called them from the streets. And brought them, and now we are working on them. 
Sinners are on the streets. The sinners are not in the church. Let's go after them. Churches, I don't know where your churches are, wherever you are coming from, from wherever. They are sinners on the street. Let's go after them. Let's go after them. And make your church conducive. Because some people, your church put people off. Your church, the way you do the church service is not interesting. It's nah. It's not nice. Good music, good instrumentation. Welcome them. Preach good short messages. Say amen. amen. Don't preach everlasting message. Don't preach everlasting message. Your message has no beginning. It has no end. It is in, it is in eternity. It has no time. Say amen. But it will short. Make it interesting. Jesus loves you. Care for them. When you finish, give them. The church at the... Down, down, whatever. They give them food. They give them food. After, they give them food to eat. They give them food. Say, hey. I said, call them. It's local. Say, yeah, we give them food. So they, they look forward to the food. They, there are people from headquarters who go eat that food here. Compel them. That my house may be full. Mom will be give them food. Cook it. Cook watch it. Bring the sinners. Bring the sinners. To Florida, bring the sinners. All white people. Bring the sinners that my house may be full. Say amen. I'm concluding. The Bible said in 1 John 4, 9 to 12, my last scripture. And this was manifested the love of God towards us because that God sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. Hearing is love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's go. 11. He says, Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. 12. No man has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwelleth in us and his love is perfected in us. If you have the love of God, you will go and show it out there in the world by giving by giving. When you go out there, give them something to eat. Give them something to eat. My friend Saki said that we are carrying food. He said, Reverend Steve, we are carrying clothes because these are we smokers who don't have clothing. We are carrying clothes, we are carrying food to give to them, to compel them to come to church. Say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Write this down. When the gospel is preached, People tend to God. When the gospel is preached, people tend to God. Number two. When the gospel is preached, lives are transformed. Lives are transformed. Many people have tried to transform the lives of others. Through many means. But it is only the gospel that can transform lives. See, I hear you, Pastor. When the gospel is preached, healing and deliverance and miracles take place. When the gospel is preached, there is healing, there is deliverance, there are miracles. When it is preached, people believe the gospel. And healings and miracles take place. When the gospel is preached, there is great joy in the city. 
when the gospel is preached, there is great joy in the city. May we bring joy into cities, into homes, into hamlets, into places when we preach the gospel. Hallelujah. When the gospel is preached, when the gospel is preached, righteousness is exalted. When the gospel is preached, righteousness is what exalted. People begin to do right things. When the gospel is preached, the land is healed. The land, the city, the village, the land is healed. Healing takes place when the gospel is preached. Lastly, when the gospel is preached, people go to heaven. It is only the preaching of the gospel that takes people to go, that takes people to heaven. Without the gospel, no social intervention can take people to heaven. No UN aid can take people to heaven. No philanthropy can come into this country and pour out food to take people to heaven. What takes people to heaven is the preaching of the gospel. Say amen. The, the preaching of what? Of the gospel. Preaching of the gospel. And what is the gospel? The gospel is Jesus Christ came to die for sinners that they might be saved and go to heaven. Sinners repent when they hear the gospel. And the gospel cannot be preached until you come out of your, of your house, of your home, of your church, and you're on the street preaching. This ministry started on the street. Yeah. yeah. This ministry didn't start, it started on the street. That is why our name first start with evangelism. Say amen. amen. Preaching. Ministry. On the street. And today, we have carried the ministry to a higher level. Cities. Nations. From the year 2020, we are going to begin again. Powerful. More. To another level. Another face of Christ in the rural world. Chatting another part. Doing what is unthinkable. With our violent faith. Say, I hear you, Pastor. 2020, we are beginning again. We've seen, we've seen miracles, healings, life, cities transformed. We have become a reference point. Many are copying our strategy. A lot. Are, I have received an invitation by Pastor Matthew that he is doing compassion ministry in Zimbabwe and Kenya. Sent for us that we should come over and help him to carry his ministry to Zimbabwe and Kenya. And we are going to help him. To help him. To help him. Say amen. I said 2020, get ready. Put down your name. Register. We are moving like a trailer. It's a movement. It's a movement. It's a movement. Be part of that move. It's a great move. For years, over 30 years, we are on it. Hallelujah. Here, say, here am I, Lord. Send me. Where do you want to be sent? Wherever. Wherever. And God will help you. God bless you. I love you all. Hallelujah.